someone's room. There was something in there with him. I know someone who can help. We took Trifield and EMF readings of the whole house, wiring, alarm clocks. I don't think bad wiring is the problem here. I think it would be wrong to go into a film citing influences using other films as the template. I think in the production design and stuff, that stuff is fine to use other films as references. Like, but when we're cooking up an idea or when I'm writing, I try and pull from real life. Like in terms of the characters, I want to base them on people I know. And with the stories, the, a lot of the scenes in the film, the ghost scenes, are based on stories we've heard. So, uh, yeah, I mean, true stories that we've heard from other family or friends. Assuming they're telling yeah. us the truth, that these yeah, yeah. ghostly things happen to them. You know, if it's so eerie and creepy to hear it from someone telling it to us, let's try and capture that on film. And that's essentially um, how the, um, the idea to want to make Insidious came about. Oh, man. What happened to your head? Oh, gosh. Scraped it. Okay. <sighs> Honey, you cannot come up here, okay? Do not explore anymore. It's, it's very dangerous, okay? Uh, the movie is about um, a young family who moves into a new house. Uh, they're excited, new beginnings, uh, a fresh start to their lives, and things start to go a bit awry. It starts off very benign, maybe things, objects moving around the house. And uh, in the tradition of any good haunted house film, it builds until their son falls into a coma and no one knows why, no one knows what's wrong with him. And then slowly the, the two events, the coma and the uh, supernatural occurrences start to tie together. That's what we naturally gravitate towards, is that stuff anyway, the spooky atmospheric stuff. We're not actually gore hounds, like if you look through our DVD collection, it's not filled with Animal Holocausts and, and uh, yeah, Last yeah. House on the Left. I actually even think the first um, Saw film was more atmospheric than, than it was. Yeah, I think there was more atmosphere in the first Saw than there was blood and guts in the first Saw film. But um, but that's what people seem to kind of... Uh... I think they associate the sequels to Saw with us. You know, I, I wrote 2 and 3 so I guess I have to share part of the blame for how gory they got because that was what was expected. It was like, okay, traps, traps, traps. Right. More traps. Right. James and I's style naturally that fits us is a, is a much sort of creepier, slower vibe, you know. And I guess if we did an action film together, then it would probably be uh, uh, something that was more explosive and stuff. Right. But I think in horror, it's better if it's quiet and slow. Your son isn't in a coma. Falling off a ladder had nothing to do with this. His physical body is here but his spiritual body is not. And the reason these disturbances, they followed you to a new home, is because it's not the house that's haunted. It's your son. Yeah, we've been approached with, with a lot of remakes, and um, and the, the, the problem is, a lot of the stuff that we've been approached to remake, we, we're like, this film doesn't need to be remade. There's lots of movies that were made back then that had, that has great concept, but they didn't necessarily have enough money behind them, right? So they could pro 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 probably warrant, you know, a, a good, you know, remake it and bring a new flavor to it, you know? Um, so I don't have anything against that, but it's just that uh, a, a lot of like remakes um, and sequels um, don't really have anything new to say. Yeah, it depends what spirit it's made in. Remake is a pretty large tent. If you're remaking a film that was made a long time ago and you're really bringing something new to it, new, new CG, then that's fantastic. In fact, some of my favorite films are remakes, like uh, The Thing and, and, and The Fly. Um, Which people forget are remakes. Well, yeah, they forget because those films were made so long ago. It's a, it's a, there's a clear reason to remake The Fly. But filmmakers brought something so fresh to it that the film feels it's like, like a, a new it, movie. its own movie on its own. So uh, that's absolutely. the most important thing. What, what, what I have distaste for is remakes made for monetary reasons where it's like, we're going to take this franchise that's well known and we're just going to redo it, reboot it. And there's none of that passion. And we were, as you say, we were offered all those films in the wake of Saw. Yeah. But we just kind of said no because I think it's pointless. It's like... I don't want to go and see a cover band. I want to see the original guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I'm sorry. This has gone too far. Well, no, please. Josh, you said that you would give her a no, chance. No, I have given her a chance, honey, but I can't have somebody coming into our home and telling us that the reason our son is in a coma is because his soul is floated off somewhere in another dimension. We're going to bring her all the way here and not even consider what she's saying? Just go out and do it. You know, um, come up with a concept, come up with a story that you love and just go shoot it. You know, it doesn't matter if the first movie isn't very good because the more you practice, the better you get. 
and uh, and ultimately you're going to hit upon something that 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 that's going to be really strong, and off the back of that, it can really get you pretty far. What is it?